Hello world, Joe Strout here again with another Coffee Break Coding with Miniscript and Mini Micro. Last time we used basic drawing commands to draw a simple face. Today we're going to take that quite a bit further. We'll still be drawing a face, but this time with animated eyes that follow the mouse. This will involve using several display layers so that we can draw the irises properly above the whites of the eyes, but behind the skin of the face. Maybe it'll help to look first at the final product so you can see what I mean. Here's what we're making. You can see that as I move the mouse around, the eyes track it. And notice how the irises are drawing behind the face itself and also behind the little highlights that appear in each eye. So how do we do this? Well, Mini Micro supports eight independent display layers. In the Mini Micro cheat sheet, you'll find a diagram that looks like this. Incidentally, if you don't already have the cheat sheet, you should get it. It tells you just about everything there is to know about Mini Micro and Miniscript in only four pages. I'll put a link to it in the description below. So on the second page of this cheat sheet, you'll find this diagram, which shows the eight display layers arranged with uh, display zero in the front and display seven in the back. There are a number of different display types, such as pixel, sprite, and text. And this diagram shows the default configuration. We're gonna change this just a little, configuring display two to also be a pixel display. Then we can draw the foreground of the face, the skin and the mouth, and the highlights and the eyes in this foreground layer. Draw the white background of the eyes in display five, and then use the sprites for irises in display four. So fire up Mini Micro and let's get started. Hit Control C to break, and uh, first I'm going to reset the program and clear the display. So I'm starting from the same empty program that you are. Now let's use the edit command to start editing. Let's clear the screen at the start of our program and then fill in the area of the whole face with white. Lines that start with a slash slash or comments, which are ignored by the computer, but helpful to us humans. And on the fill rect command, the four numbers it needs are left, bottom, width, and height. And then optionally a color. Now to test what we have so far, we can click this run button, or we can just hit F5. I tend to use F5 because my hands are already on the keyboard. Okay, so you can see that we filled the entire area of the face with white, which is more than we need. It's only gonna be visible where the eyes are, but that's fine. There's no harm in drawing more than we need, and it'll allow us to move the eyes around a bit without worrying about the black background showing through where the eyes should be. Now let's set up the foreground layer on display two and start drawing the face. Let's see, set the, set the foreground layer. So that changes display two so that it's also a pixel display and we'll assign it to a variable called FG for foreground. And clear it to the clear color. Now let's draw the skin of the face using the same coordinates we used above. And I believe in code a little, test a little. So I'm gonna hit F5. Oops, and you can see I made a mistake. That's okay, mistakes happen. I just left out a period here. It should be FG dot fill rect. And there we go. Face is now brown. And now let's draw the eyes. Remember, this is just a comment for us humans. I'll use a couple of variables to keep track of where the eyes are, just as we did in the first program. And then just a bunch of fill ellipse commands. I'm not gonna to dwell too much on the drawing commands today because we covered those last time. But if you're watching this video first and you're confused about fill rect, fill the lips and colors and so on, you might go back and watch the previous video. reason I'm defining the 
positions of the eyes this way is because I know I want the center of the eye to be at ix1 by iy, so if I subtract off 60 and use a width of 120, then it's centered on x. And similarly with y, if I subtract 25 and use a height of 50, it's going to be centered on iy. And I'll just copy that for the second eye, change this to x2. And then I'm going to draw little highlights in each eye with a smaller ellipse. And I don't want these to be centered. I just fiddled around with the numbers till I liked where they came out. So ix1 minus 20, go up by 10, and we'll just draw a little 10 by 10 pixel highlight. And to get the color, none of the built-in colors like color clear and color brown and color white are quite appropriate for the highlights because I want them to be a translucent white. So I'm going to use insert color and I can pick you know any of the standard colors here but I can also just adjust these sliders. I'm going to turn the alpha down. You can see alpha is how transparent the color is. I don't want it to be super transparent. I want it to be, I don't know, maybe something like this. Click insert and then Again, I'll copy and paste this line and do the same thing for ix2. Okay, hit F5 to test. There's our eyes. We can't see the highlights in the eyes yet because we're drawing translucent white on a white background. It doesn't show up, but they'll be visible once we draw the irises. So let's turn to that next. Now to draw those irises, I'm going to do something new. I'm going to make a sprite for each one. A sprite is a little picture that can be very efficiently drawn, moved, scaled, and rotated. You can get the image for a sprite either from disk or from the web. There are some built-in images in Mini Micro to get you started, but none of those are really quite right for today's project. So I'm going to grab an image from the web. I searched the web earlier and I found this nice little iris image on Imgur. So I'm going to just copy this URL and then switch back to Mini Micro. And I can paste that as the argument to http.get. In fact, we can test this right on the command line. Let me just clear the screen. And I'll use the view command with http.get. Paste in that URL. And there it is. You can see that Minimicro is able to access that URL as an image. So let's use that to create our sprite. And I'll put this URL in the description as well, so you can just copy it from there if you like. So edit. Start with another comment. So this time, instead of using view, I am getting an image from the web and I'm assigning it to this variable called the iris image. So I can refer to it in the code that follows. We assign it to the image property of the sprite and that's how the sprite knows what to draw. And then we have to tell the sprite which display it should live in. Or really, we're telling the display, here's a sprite you should draw. Tell it where it should draw. And because the image I found on the web is too big for our purposes, I'm going to scale it down a little bit. Scale it to 0 0.5, so half its regular size. And then I'm just going to copy and paste this code. And we'll do the same thing for I2. X2. And let's test it out. There we go. Our eyes have irises. And you can see they're being they're drawing behind the highlights. It's a little hard to see that they're being clipped by the face itself because they're right in the center of the eyes. So let's make a move around and follow the mouse. Now we're going to define a function that points just uh, one eye at the mouse, and then we can call that function for each eye. So it's a function that will take an eye sprite and an x and y location where it should be centered. I'll calculate the difference between the mouse position and that position. Calculate the distance to the mouse. dx squared plus dy squared, take the square root, and that's the distance. And then we'll just uh, divide the 
difference between, well, let me type it first and then explain it. Okay, so if we just did ix equals x plus dx, that would end up putting the i right at wherever the mouse is. But we don't want to move it that far towards the mouse. We only want to move it about 20 pixels towards the mouse. mouse. So we take this difference in x and y, multiply it by 20, and then divide it by whatever the complete distance is, and that will scale it so that it moves only uh, at most 20 pixels towards the mouse and our function. And now we just need an infinite loop while true point i at mouse i1 centered at i x1 i y and then same thing for the second i and while and let's try it out and there we go the eyes move around to watch the mouse and you can see that they're properly layered between the whites in the background and the foreground elements, the skin and the highlights. Now, if you're learning to code, I really encourage you to try this on your own computer. You learn a little bit from watching, but you learn a lot more from doing it yourself. If you have any trouble, join us on Discord or in the forums, or even just comment below and I'll get back to you as quick as I can. Happy coding!